Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy, my right nut hangs lower than my left nut here, back with another Elden Ring challenge video, and today we're gonna see if it's possible to be Elden Ring without using any Sights of Grace. So basically, if I can't use Sights of Grace, that means I can't level up, I can't go to the round table, I can't get torrent, I can't fast travel, and every time I die, I get sent all the way back to the beginning of the game and have to run all the way back to the boss I died on. It also means I can't attune any spells or incantations, I can't use any golden seeds to add any flasks, I can't allocate my flask to anything different than what it starts at, I can't replenish my flask without dying, and yeah, this, this all just sounds like a goddamn nightmare. And, and spoiler alert, it, it was. But I can level up my weapons because there is a blacksmith in the open world, so hey, that's something. Other than that, this is probably the worst thing I've ever attempted. Also, the character I tried to make this time really didn't turn out the way I wanted to, but I actually looked it up and somebody did make a better version of this already, but they didn't reply when I asked them for their slider info, so here's their version. 10 out of 10 would suck him good and hard through his jorts. Also, the first thing I did in this run was almost it at the first sight of grace I see because my monkey brain can apparently not focus on a task for more than 5 seconds, but luckily we did not do that. I obviously wanted to replace my starting weapon for something a bit better, and for some reason I thought it would be a good idea to get this blood dagger again, because it does have the ability to make enemies bleed, which is kind of overpowered in this game, and it also has the blood slash ability so I can make my foes bleed from a distance, so that's pretty cool. The only issue is that it is weak as hell compared to some of the other weapons I could have got, and it also has extremely short range because it is literally a dagger, but once again, my monkey brain could not think ahead more than 5 seconds because I literally grabbed the first weapon I can think of when there's probably a hundred better options out there. I did eventually get my dagger and make it to the boss, and obviously I died immediately and got sent back to the beginning of the game for the first of many, many, many times. This is gonna be torture. I walk a lonely road by the time I finally beat him, it really wasn't the prettiest fight I've had with him, but I was already pretty done with this run and I was already tired of running back over and over, so I really didn't care how long it was going to take or how sloppy or non-impressive it looked, I just really wanted to beat him. I honestly thought it was going to be super easy to beat him since I've literally beat him without rolling before, but it actually took me about an hour and a half, and obviously most of that time was just spent running back to him over and over and over, and this is just the first fight and I am already a broken man. But after about an hour and a half of struggling, I finally looked deep within myself to remember Soldier Boy's words of wisdom when he said, In this world, you either crank that Soldier Boy or it cranks you. And with those inspirational words running through my head, I was finally able to beat him and breathe a very heavy sigh of relief. After struggling with that fight a lot more than I thought I was going to, I really wanted to head on over to Cleveland to grab the Dragon Shield Talisman to boost my defense, but I really did not want something to kill me on the way and lose my runes, so first I headed for the blacksmith to buy some upgrade materials. Unfortunately, I knew this was going to extend my journey by a lot because I was basically going the opposite way of the Dragon Shield Talisman, but with the amount of runes I had now, I just could not risk it for the biscuit. Also, right before making it to the blacksmith, after a very long journey with like a schmeckle of health left, I died. And right as I was about to go sicko mode on my desk, I realized there was actually a stake of Marika right next to him, so my desk was saved for another day. At least for now. Unfortunately, I can only get my weapon to level 3 right now, so I'll have to make a return trip later. Now I have the arduous task of running all the way back so I can teleport to Cleveland so I can hardcore parkour my way down to the Dragon Shield Talisman just so I can have a little more defense. <laughs> oh, this run would be so much easier if I actually planned it out, but that shit's for nerds, and despite me having over 300 hours in this game, I am clearly not. And I was prepared to run all the way back to Stormville Castle until I got the big brain one bajillion IQ I understand Rick and Morty move of just offing myself so I'll just get sent back to the graveyard, making my trip much shorter. Eventually I make it back to the castle and I almost, I almost took the puss boy way around because I really did not want to die to the arrows or some other bullshit, but the Alpha Omega Thundercock Chad in me just could not bring myself to do it. It was a long run, I took some hits, and I got to the boss with a whopping 1 HP flask left to my name, so this should be fun. Okay, but on god, no cap, for real for real, this was a pretty easy fight. I always find this fight much easier than Godfrey because he is way slower and he has a lot easier to dodge attacks in my opinion, and luckily I did not die at all during this fight and I was not condemned to another hellish walk back here. I basically just fought him like normal, except I was extra cautious obviously because I really didn't want to take any risks because I could not afford to make any mistakes because of my lack of flasks. I was able to make pretty good use of my blood slash ability and I mostly just waited for him to do his tornado attack because it's super easy to avoid and punish. 
Second phase is even easier to punish because whenever he does one of his fire attacks or something like that, you can just get skin on skin with him to avoid the fire and just get a ton of hits in before he gets done. If you're more skilled than me, you could probably avoid taking any damage from the fire, but other than his fire attacks, this fight is about as easy as your mom. Haha, <laughs> got him fucking roasted at 350 for 20 minutes or until golden brown. Biatch. <laughs> that, that was kind of cringe, I might delete that. You know what else is cringe? Not having NordVPN and letting your data be stolen by evil hackers that want to leak your internet history. NordVPN will secure your internet traffic, encrypt it, and route it through a remote server. But also, let's say you do have a one bajillion IQ and somehow understand the complex jokes in Rick and Morty. But ah, alas, you do live in the United States like me and it's not available on Netflix in your country. No problem, just change your location to the UK and boom bada boom, now you can watch all the wacky adventures with Rick and Morty all you want. Nord is also adding a new feature called Threat Protection that will protect you from malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads even when you're not connected to a VPN server. For example, say you want to download the hottest new Hannah Montana song, but alas, someone has infected your song with a malicious virus. No problem, Nord will scan your song and delete the virus before it can ever even reach your computer. So head on down to the link in the description to get a two year plan with a huge discount plus an additional month completely free. You could even try NordVPN risk free for 30 days with a money back guarantee. So thank you again for NordVPN sponsoring this video. After that, I made the very tough choice of heading all the way back to Cleveland to the castle so I can grab the Radagon Talisman, and holy shit, that was torture. I really didn't want to lose the 20k runes I had, even though I didn't really know what to spend it on other than some better armor or something, but I died immediately anyway. I did use all the runes I had to buy this chain armor, and look at me. I'm fucking beautiful. It may not be the drippiest thing I've ever seen, but we really don't have a lot of options right now, and it gives me a bit more defense than I had before. After a long ass time, and luckily zero deaths, I do finally make it to the castle, run in there, and I also grab the medallion while I'm there, and then I almost get bodied by a rat in one hit, and then I do in fact get bodied by a bigger rat in one hit, and then I go all the way back to the graveyard. And also, since I like wasting time, I decided to head to this merchant in East Limgrave to buy a 100% physical block shield to use when I can't parry my enemies. And then we run our happy asses all the way to Ronella's castle, and I forgot the fucking key. After decorating my wall with some new holes, I headed on over to grab the key, and I was almost certain the dragon here would kill me, but honestly he didn't really seem to mind, so we're pretty tight now. We even hang out on the weekends. Eventually, we finally make it to the castle before the red wolf fight with a whopping zero flask and about my dick's length worth of health, so this is definitely going to be fun. My plan was basically just to wait for him to do his leaping attack and take advantage of that, and my shield can basically block all of his bites and stuff pretty well, but if it's a magic attack, I have to avoid that by dodging or I will die for sure. But as you can probably guess, yeah, I didn't make it, and I proceeded to scream my head off into my life-size Danny DeVito pillow. I'm on my long journey home. 20 minutes later, we're back with three flasks and minimum damage taken this time. Same strategy as before, just wait for him to do his jumping attack and also attack whenever he does his two slashes and ends with a jump slash and also avoid magic attacks at all cost. Luckily I made it with all my flasks because I ended up using all three of them because I kept making stupid mistakes like a dumb bitch because my brain is just numb to this game right now. But a few dodges here, a few slashes here and boom bada boop he's dead. Now I gotta go take on Mommy Ranella with her super stuffed up milkies, her fucking fabric stretching, wind flapping, gravity welling sex mounds, but first I gotta take on her simp out in the front. A lot of the times I would just run past him, but I know for sure I'm gonna die and have to run all the way back here and run past him, and he's probably just gonna kill my ass, so I figured I should just take him on now, and luckily I'm a parry god and swiftly murdered this fool. Now I'm gonna go into this fight with even less health than before, so I'm probably gonna kill her first try. He did not kill her first try. I walk alone. After making it back and dying almost immediately again, I decided to swallow my pride and just go get some spirit ashes to help me out with the fight, but I quickly realized that I can't even use spirit ashes because you need the summoning bell. And to get the summoning bell, you need to sit at a site of grace. And FromSoft obviously thought of the people that might miss that site of grace and would still want the summoning bell, so they did give you another option, but you do have to go to the round table, which I also can't get to unless I sit at a site of grace. <sighs> I hate this game. This fight literally took me over 20 minutes to beat. The beginning is obviously easy enough, even though I'm a dunce and got hit twice, but I was able to finish her after dropping her twice. At the beginning of the second phase, I just go crazy on her because she does get staggered quite easily and it doesn't really take too long to get to the part where she starts summoning stuff. 
But when she starts summoning stuff, oh, I hate it. I hate it a lot. Actually, no, I don't hate it. I hate the Bloodhound Knight because for some fuck all reason, unbeknownst to me, he is the only one that stays forever and ever and ever when everyone else disappears after a few seconds. And of course, he's the most dangerous and the hardest one to avoid. So I spent the entirety of the second phase just running really, really far away from her to avoid her spells and then running in, getting a single hit and then running away and repeating that process over and over. Yes, very riveting gameplay, very stimulating to the brain. I do not want to die at all. This was probably my least favorite fight so far, and it's usually one of the easier fights in these runs, but with the looming threat of having to run all the way back here, I decided to fight her in the most tedious way possible because I really did not want to risk it for the biscuit and have to run all the way back again. For some stupid reason, I forgot to grab the other half of the medallion, so I quickly off myself so I can spawn back in hell, I, I mean the graveyard. Wait, what? We spawn back at the library now? Okay, well that'll be kind of convenient for later, but I actually wanted to go back to the stranded graveyard for now, but oh well. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the only way to get back is I have to run through Stormville Castle, and I figured while I was here I might as well activate my Great Rune, but that's when I realized if I actually want to turn it on, I'm gonna have to sit out of sight of Grace. I want to die. And on top of that, I realized there's actually no way to get back across the bridge without either teleporting or dying. Why oh why did I not grab the medallion when I was back there? I hate myself. Eventually I do make it to the castle, grab the medallion, off myself, and before I start heading towards the capital, I figured I should edit my character to better represent my actual mood for the game at the moment. Ah, perfect. After another long and lonely journey, I hoist my medallion and run straight for the tree sentinel, and yeah, I did die a couple times on the way, but thank the wiggles there is a stake of Marika next to the actual boss, so it really wasn't too bad to fight him. Luckily, I have just enough stamina to be able to dodge a fireball, hit him, and then block his next attack without taking any damage. I would pretty much only attack him after rolling through his fireball, hitting him, and then holding my shield up as I'm backing away because that was a little bit more reliable than rolling for me because if I messed up the roll and get hit one time during this fight, it's game over and I have to do it all over again. It definitely takes an extremely long time and it was very tedious, but eventually I do make it to the second phase and immediately die. <laughs> I love this game. I'm having a really good time actually. Eventually I do make it back to the second phase, and other than having to dodge some lightning strikes, it's pretty similar to the first phase where I just dodge through his fireballs, whack him in the nose, and then rinse and repeat that until he does actually die for real this time. Now that we have him taken care of, we can finally head into the capital, and wait, what? So apparently you can't get in there without talking to Melina, and to do that we would have to sit at a sight of grace, and that is no bueno. There is actually another way to get in there, but to do that it would require me using the wrong warp glitch, but to do that we would have to activate a couple grace sites, which is also no bueno. I do have one more trick up my sleeve by using a certain teleporter, but unfortunately we would have to kill Radon, and for some reason I cannot get the festival to activate. And after doing about 9.6 seconds of research, I'm pretty sure you would have to sit at a site of grace to actually activate the Radon festival to actually be able to fight him, so that is another plan that is thwarted. Luckily, I lied to you before, and I actually have one more trick up my sleeve. Let me in. Let me in. Okay, that didn't work either, but luckily I have another, another trick up my sleeve, so I off myself, head back to the library, and make a journey all the way down to the Weeping Peninsula to use this teleporter to get us into the capital, at least to the tower part of the capital. And now that we're here, all we have to do is do this zip glitch to get over there, which actually is extremely difficult because it requires very precise timing. There's plenty of videos on YouTube to explain how to do this better, but basically you have to stand here, hold your shield up, hold the alt button, and walk forward at the perfect frame and it'll just launch you forward. My biggest issue with this is your game needs to be running at exactly 60 FPS for this to work reliably, and for some reason, despite me having a pretty good computer, my game just loves running at 59 frames a second despite me having it at the lowest settings possible. So because of this, after a while I did turn off my recording software to see if that would help keep me at 60, which it did, but luckily before I did that, I recorded myself doing it one time while I was practicing on this bridge just to prove that I can. Unfortunately, I did not record the time that I actually zipped off the bridge to the spot that I needed to be, but you saw me, you saw me, I can do it, it is possible, but it just sucks that I can't keep my computer at 60 FPS because that is basically a requirement to be able to do this consistently. I literally sat here in this one spot for a couple hours trying to get this down perfect and I even had a little metronome thing downloaded that they made specifically for people trying to do this zip glitch so you can time it a lot easier. And if you're wondering, now when I die, instead of going back to the library, it'll just put me right back where you teleport in at that tower right before we did the zip glitch. So if you've actually played this game and gotten this far, which I'm assuming most of you have, you're probably wondering how I'm going to get out of this room because once you kill the boss, they put up a little barrier that will not go away until you sit at a site of grace. 
But uh, ah, you must have forgot about the glitches, you dumb bitch, because all I gotta do is hop up here and then just start shooting him with my arrows and just just keep shooting and just just keep on shooting him and eventually he will die. Just keep going and I uh, I, I think they patched this shit. Okay, okay, I have another plan. Let's just say I never actually went to the capital and I just loaded my old save back to after I killed the Draconic Tree Sentinel. There's a video on YouTube that shows when you're at this spot and you do the zip glitch, you can launch yourself all the way to the concentrated snowfield. And once you're at the concentrated snowfield, you can do another zip glitch to get all the way to the mountaintop of the giants. And now, was I able to do this? No, because I'm a dumb bitch and could just not get it to work. But there is video proof on YouTube of somebody doing this and clearly the zip glitches have not been patched yet. Now, let's just say, theoretically, I'm not a dumb bitch. Yeah, I know, it's a hard reality to imagine, but let's just say, theoretically, I was able to get this to work, and now I am at the mountaintop of the giants. And now, all we have to do to move on is, you know, just, just kill the fire giant at level 5 with my puny little dagger. <laughs> I have, uh, I've been dreading this moment, not gonna lie. I have killed the fire giant without taking a single hit before and I'm basically gonna have to do it again because I will get one shot by any of his attacks but the problem is before when I did it without taking a hit I had the help of torrent and I do not have torrent this time. But before we get to the fire giant I at least have to make it across this stupid bridge and for some reason it, it was just not happening for a very long time. Luckily there's a stake of Marika right before the bridge so that made it a lot more bearable. Oh, oh, oh yeah nice 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 thanks. Oh, oh yeah for sure un understandable. Uh, oh, you too? You want to kill me too? Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. This is for making me do mom's laundry! <clears throat> Eventually, I do make it across the Bridge of Death, kill this beetle for a smithing stone 8, and also grab this smithing stone 9 up here, just in case I end up deciding to upgrade my weapons. And after that, I have to run past this scaly dragon, and that was not fun, because this is probably my least favorite dragon in the entire game. The fire giant fight was pretty awful. The bleed from the dagger definitely helps a little bit, but since it takes longer and longer to make him bleed after every time you make him bleed, it, it didn't help as much as I would want it to. It took me many, many, many tries to get past the first phase, and I just stuck to hitting that ankle, obviously, and in the second phase, I just stuck to hitting that nub because that was basically one of the only spots that I felt kind of safe because no matter what, pretty much any hit I take, it's going to be a one shot. And if you're wondering, I did die plenty of times, and every time I died, I got sent all the way back to the beginning where the Grand Lift of Rolled is, and had to run all the way back to the Fire Giant, so yeah, I suffered plenty during this. Unfortunately, after beating the Fire Giant, that's when my big old bag of tricks was running on E, because I have absolutely no idea how to get to Farrah Missoula without sitting at the Site of Grace at the Big Forge. After doing about seven and a half seconds of research, I couldn't find any videos of anybody doing the zip glitch to get to Farrah Missoula, and the only other way I know besides doing it the regular way is doing the wrong warp glitch, but that would require me using like two or three Sites of Grace, so that's just not worth it. I tried absolutely everything I could think of. I tried hitting it. I tried seducing it. I even tried freestyling to it, but nothing worked. I'm cold as ice, been that before, razzle dazzle, and I'm the one preach, y'all chill, then vacate the tabernacle. What's the beast to a dinosaur, nigga? Pterodactyl mixed with a T Rex. T Rex -dactyl. I am just a failure. The only thing I could think of to somewhat make up for my failureness is showing you one of my favorite memes of all time. I mean, everyone my age remembers this classic episode of iCarly when Freddy gets a tattoo. Okay, let's just say, once again, I am not a dumb bitch, and I actually never came to the mountaintop of the giants, and what I really did was do the wrong warp glitch here that requires no sights of grace like this fella did, because I lack the skills to actually do it myself. Theoretically. So we make it to Farrah Missoula, run through, get to the next boss, and normally I would not summon in these runs, but I'm gonna make an exception for this one so I don't lose my goddamn mind, and yeah, this makes it much, much, much easier. My summon takes most of the heat while I just stand back, use my blood slashes, and run out of the way, trying to keep one distracted while he fights the other one, because usually he can't handle fighting both of them at the same time without dying. I really did not help much during this fight besides keeping one distracted and also at one point when he knocked one down I did get a backstab on him because teamwork does in fact make the dream work. I even generously let him take the last hit because I wanted absolutely nothing to do with what was going on over there and if I did actually die during this fight I would not be able to summon him again because the fog wall would block the room that I needed to get into to summon him back. And to celebrate my success I tried to get the upgraded version of the dragon shield talisman and immediately jumped to my death. Nice. 
Now we finally make it to the beast boy himself. And this is when I finally whip out my bow to make this fight much easier because the beast part of the fight is super easy. If you just keep your distance, dodge one of his attacks and then shoot your arrows at him all the way until the second phase. For the Malekith section of the fight, we keep our bow out, and in my bow only run, I got a lot of comments saying that I need to do a jump shot, and yeah, you guys are 100% right. This fight is much easier doing the jump shot. It is way easier and way faster to do it this way. Me not doing jump shots in my bow only run, it's just a product of me not really doing much research for these runs ever. I usually just kind of wing it and see what happens, so yeah. Sorry if I frustrate a lot of you doing that. This is another fight that I've beat without taking a hit before, so I'm pretty used to doing it. I basically just wait for him to do his three slash in the air and get a couple hits in, or I just wait for him to walk towards me all menacingly and just shoot him with a couple arrows until he gets close. I obviously also just use my poison arrows until he's poisoned, and then I'll switch over to my fire arrows to do even more damage, but eventually I did run out of my fire arrows, but I expertly switched over to my regular arrows, and that was enough to finish the job. Now we're finally back to the destroyed version of the capital, and I was actually kind of curious if there was a way to escape here without using using a site of grace and I looked around for a whopping two minutes and couldn't find an exit so that factually means that there is no exits here unless you use the teleport 100% don't look it up put it on the wiki now we have to face the menace himself Gideon and yeah even at level five this fight really isn't too difficult every time he tries to do a spell I just start smacking him around with my dagger to stop him and eventually he'll just bite the dust the best part about Gideon though is that I can finally get a new set of armor from him but unfortunately I can't get rid of this cape because I would need to use a Sight of Grace because I think this armor looks way cooler without it. Also another reason that I hate the cape is it kind of just kept clipping through my body and being really glitchy so I used my hella epic hacker skills to get the altered version of it because I am just a very very bad boy. Please don't tell the government. Now it's time for the buff daddy himself, and my controller died immediately. Sweet. This fight honestly sucked so bad. It took me hours to beat, and that's not only just because I had to run all the way back from the beginning of the area every time I died. I just got my ass kicked for a very long time. I actually got pretty good with this fight with ranged attacks, but I'm pretty rusty with melee only, especially with this puny little dagger that I have. For a while, I was just baiting out a stomp attack with my blood slash thing because every time I did that, he would do a stomp attack and I could just roll into him, get a hit, and then rinse and repeat that until he starts stomping the entire arena. At this point, it was actually a little bit easier because he just dashes at you a lot and does the stomp a lot more and it's the same thing as the first phase. Just roll into him whenever he dashes at you and then hit him and run away. His final phase though is what really sucks because it's really hard to tell what he's going to do a lot of the times and I just found it safest to just wait until he does one of his many attacks where he dives at you or jumps at you and tries to grab you or something and just roll into him, hit him, and then run away. It's obviously a lot easier said than done because you do so little damage that this takes forever and if you make one little mistake in this entire really really long fight, you're screwed because you can't take a single hit from him ever and especially can't survive a grab attack. But eventually, as always, with enough perseverance, we get through it and move on to the final boss. So, can you be Elden Ring without using any Sights of Grace? Well, with glitches, yes, yes, you definitely can. You could literally beat this game in like seven minutes with glitches, so yeah. 
doing it without glitches though yeah definitely not <laughs> the game really does not want you to beat it without at least talking to melina a couple times so yeah it's pretty much impossible to beat this game doing it the right way without sitting on a few sites of grace but thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it this far. This video took me a very long time to make. Probably spent the most time doing this run than any other run so far. So I'd really appreciate a like or subscribe if you think I deserve it. But thanks again, guys. Have a good one. Peace.